I met a gypsy. Yeah, man, I, I mean, I agree with everything that you said. Um, I, I was, when uh, Hayden was just on then, I said to him, you know, he obviously would know. Like, the narrative that, like, the negative narrative is, oh, fucking danger, boys, just Brian Deegan's son, rich kids had everything handed to him his whole life. <laughs> I, and I sort of, I said to Hayden just then, it's like, what you did, like, you just picked the best bike and you picked the program that was right for you. But what you showed, and I think I may have even said this to you yesterday when we spoke, but he, he showed that he didn't want it easy. Like to jump in, to, to move to Florida and to jump in and be the little fish in the big pond and be the little kid with all these grown ass men around and to go to Florida where it's hot as all year round and it's gonna rain most of the days that he like he chose the hard option like star racing yamaha that's the hard team to ride for bro like do you know what's you know what's yeah. easy staying in california where there's tons yeah. of cute girls rolling around he's the man at every track he goes to like you get to stay in the comfort zone you get to stay with mum. like he he chose like the little rich kid that's been given everything his whole life Guess what? He just chose the hardest option. And I think that that says a lot about his character. I'm glad I'm glad you said that because I you know I I that's been a thought on my mind for sure and and I'm like and, and knowing that too that Hayden's 15, right? He he's in my eyes still a kid becoming a young man, right? And, and um and I'm like so we still, you know, have to be involved with parents and we still have to guide and make sure things are in the, going the right way for sure. And, and uh, man, California, yeah, we could have easily stayed right there and said, you know what, KTM's right down the street, test tracks are there. Yeah. We have everything we need, right? We, I mean, we're good, like we, we could run that program. But I looked at it and I'm like, okay, let's be honest, KTM's 450 program, badass, right? These guys, like no joke, That's, that, is, that is one of the best uh, teams, 100%. And then I'd say, okay, lights programs, okay, for a young rider that's 15 years old that needs to get developed, he's not there yet. He's got a lot of work to do, okay? He's got at least another year or two, who knows how many years until he'll be ready to be professional because when he turns pro, there's no turning back, dude. It's, and, and you're on the best team that wins championships, okay? You're not going to go out and run 10th, right? It's yeah. not, not, people aren't going to be okay with that. It's not okay. Like, let's just go out and race Supercross and learn as we go. It's just not an option. So my, you know, my point is we really thought about what's the best spot for Hayden to, to develop as a 15 year old racer. And, and that was one of the key decisions and, and key uh, points in this whole decision was uh, where's the best place for him. And, and, uh, and that's where we ended up because Star has built a lot of young riders and they built a lot of riders that weren't just phenoms, right? They mm. built riders that kind of came out of the woodwork, right? And they, they formed them and molded them. And next thing you know, these dudes are winning championships. And, and so I'm like, wow, that to me, I, I see all that. I study that. And, um, you know, KTM, yeah, he would have been there. He would have been a factory, you know, lights guy there. And then, I mean, one of two guys uh, that I know of at this point. And I mean, there'd been a ton of focus on him. I mean, there would have been a lot of guys I focus on him. And, and, um, and, and instead, he's like, okay, I'm going to jump into a team where I'm going to be the lowest man on the totem pole. And, and all these dudes are champions ahead of me. And man, this is not the easy, like people may think that was the easy choice. I don't think it was. Yeah, like, no, at the end of the day, wasn't, he picked, he picked yeah. a gnarly choice and, yeah. and a move to, I mean, he's not, this isn't like, oh, the goat farm. This is like middle of the woods in Georgia, okay? It's not like we're at some like, you know, Disneyland. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, you know, Southern California, <laughs> where there's like <laughs> 10 tracks right here and everyone's pulling up in their factory rigs and you're riding with all every, you, you know, all the top dudes are all come from all directions. And, and there's, a, you know, photographers everywhere, video guys everywhere. And it's, you know, California's is the scene, right? For moto. I get it. I got it. Dude, it's badass. But at the point of where he needs to be, he doesn't need the glitz and glam right now. He just doesn't. He needs to put his head down and train and work and basically come out in a year or two from now as you know a, a changed rider a developed rider a, a matured rider that hopefully can get the job done dude and, and uh hopefully this is a place with less distractions 
And um, man, I, I, I'm, I'm proud of his decision, you know, because if he would have said, hey, I want to go this way or that way, we would have been like, okay, man, let's figure it out. Let's we'll make this work. And, and uh, that's, that's kind of what happened, dude. And it, you know, if you look and say, oh, it was about the money, about this, it just wasn't, dude. Like, we're not sitting in a situation where we have to do that. Like, oh, we needed a sign for that. Like, that wasn't the situation, man. It just wasn't. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it's cool. Like, as a, as, a, as a kid, he chose the hard road. And, you know, like, you historically, like, you go back and you look at, uh, well, Ricky, he lived in that fucking house that's there. <laughs> like that's the hard yeah, road yeah. the hard road's the road you want yeah, to do the... yeah and uh you look at it and i look at it too i'm like how many you know where do these champions come from where do they come from around the world and man a lot of good guys have come from europe you know a lot of you know let's see who's you know frandis and yeah. you look at some of these the guys that are on top right now you're like okay it's been a while since this socal guy has has rised up right and i think to do that he needs to get around those guys that have that are champions and, and winning and and I feel like that's what was so critical about being here and talking to Ricky. You know, Ricky showed up to the track and and you know he's, and he's like, man, I go, where did what did you do? Where did you train? He's like, right here. I go, you didn't go anywhere else. He's like, no, right here. This is it. And he's like, this is where I train. This is where I did my motos. I go, who'd you ride with? He's like, the clock, man. I raced the clock and. Like, it was some OG. I was like, this yeah. guy's like, yeah. this is OG right here because he wasn't like, oh, I was at Paris and Glen Helen and riding with all the bros and like all the guys were there and we were just doing motos. Like, no. He was like, I was here doing work and uh, you living in that house, right? I don't even know. Like, it's like this tiny little cabin. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it, it, it's, it's pretty old and it's, I mean, you got to be pretty gritty to stay there, I, dude. And, and uh and it sounds like that was his spot man and and, yep. and it paid off you know T 10 years of grit now he's living does whatever he wants to do and he's you know one of the most respected dudes in the sport if not the world and uh because he put in the time put in the work you know and, and I, I i can respect that if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang